Now we'll take a look at two more examples of subtracting sine fractions. Our first example is negative five-sevenths minus negative one-fifth. So the first thing we should notice here is that we do not have a common denominator. So we want to determine the least common denominator if we have a denominator of seven and five. And when both denominators are prime numbers like we have here, the product of these two will be our least common denominator. And since seven times five is equal to 35, 35 will be our least common denominator. Which means we'll have to multiply this first fraction by five in the denominator and five in the numerator. We'll have to multiply the second fraction by seven in the denominator and seven in the numerator. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this. And for this first fraction, we're gonna move the negative sign up into the numerator. So we'll have negative 25 all over 35. And having the negative in the numerator just makes it easier to keep track of. And then notice how we have minus a negative fraction, and that's equivalent to adding a positive fraction. So we'll write this as plus, this will be seven over 35. Now that we have a common denominator we can add, the denominator stays the same, and then we add the numerators. So negative 25 plus seven is equal to negative 18. And this fraction does not simplify, but normally you will see the negative sign back out in front of the fraction in most textbooks. So let's go ahead and write this as negative 18 35ths. Now let's take a look at a second example. Again, notice how we do not have a common denominator, and this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. We need to determine the least common multiple of 18 and 12, which would also be the smallest number that is divisible by both 18 and 12. So in this example, what we'll do is look at the prime factorization of the denominators to help us determine what the least common denominator would be. And if we want, we can also write this as an addition problem. Subtracting 5 twelfths is the same as adding negative 5 twelfths. But that would be an optional step. And that would be an optional step, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna write this as negative one over the prime factorization of 18. Well, 18 is two times nine, and nine is three times three. And then I'll write this as plus negative five all over the prime factorization of 12, which would be two times two times three. Now looking at the prime factorization of the denominators, we can build the least common denominator by analyzing the prime factors. We need to make sure the denominators contain the exact same prime factors. And notice how this denominator has two factors of two and this one only has one. So this denominator needs another factor of two and we can multiply by two as long as we do the same in the numerator. And then looking at the second denominator, notice how it only contains one factor of three, but this contains two factors of three. So the second fraction needs another factor of three in the denominator and in the numerator. And now notice both denominators contain the same prime factors, which in both cases gives a product of 36, which is our least common denominator. Now let's go ahead and multiply these back together. We have negative two all over 36, Plus here we have negative 15 all over 36. So now we can add, the denominator stays the same, and then we combine the numerators. Negative two plus negative 15 is equal to negative 17. But again, you'll normally see this where the negative sign is out front of the fraction in most textbooks. So I think if you have a hard time determining what the least common denominator would be, looking at the prime factorization of the denominators is often very helpful.